Happy. Thank you for joining us for another We Connect and Procter & Gamble South Africa webinar. We're really delighted that you could make the time to join us. Today, we have yet another PNG expert. Um, Jenny, Jenny also did a coaching session recently, so I know her material is really worthwhile and there's a lot of learning from it from personal experience, which is always the best ways to teach other people. Today, she's going to take us through strategy to build a high performance team and cultures. So I'm going to hand straight over to Mikhail. I always forget to say who I am. My name is Jean Chawapiwa. I'm from WeConnect International in South Africa. I'm the country director. Um, this session is being recorded and we will share the recording and the slides with you. Just give us um, a week or so to do that after we download and it'll be uploaded to the WeConnect Academy. I'm gonna hand straight over to Mikhail um, to take us through to Jenny. Thank you. Great, thanks, Jean. Um, hi, everyone, and thanks for joining and making the time to join this webinar. Uh, just a few house rules and housekeeping uh, before we start. Can you please remain on mute? That just helps with the background and disruptions. And also, if you have any questions, can you please send them through in the chat? Um, now, I'll hand over to Jenny to take us through strategy to build high performance team cultures. Hi everyone. Um, just for my introduction, I thought I'd just share a little bit about myself so that you know where, you, where I'm coming from. Um, I've been in the pharmaceutical industry for about 20, uh, I'd say close on 30 years now. I'm a mother of two, Amy and Andrew. Amy's just completed her um, honours. She's got her degree and she's in a management program for a, a very big company. And my son, Andrew, has just started varsity. So his first year of varsity is no fun during this COVID time. It's fun for me because I don't have the empty nest syndrome. Um, I'm married to Stephen, been married for 28 years. I'm very proudly and passionately South African. I have some secret gaming pastimes, <laughs> but not those um, that my son does. Um, more, um, more sedate for the mother. Reading is my downtime and I love to travel. But most importantly, people are my passion and I believe that is why I've been in the field I've been in for so long. Um, within this new reality, I'm really trying to work hard on making us self-sustainable. So I'm focusing on veggie gardening, looking at uh, new water wise ways, uh, et cetera. So it's, it's been quite a learning experience for me. And um, I just thought I'd share that with you. I'm going to put my camera off now while I continue with the presentation. Um, and I look forward to getting questions from you. And I do hope um, that you take some worthwhile, worthwhile nuggets with you today after this presentation. Okay. So COVID is our new reality and everyone's asking what's the strategy to build high performance cultures in times of crisis? When I was working on this presentation, I went back to all the leadership books, the internet, everything that um, could try and give me better knowledge. But while I was doing this, I wanted, I was first was going to come with a scholastic view, but then I thought, actually, um, my team and I have been through times of crisis, and um, this is just one of them again. Um, and that I would actually look at what has happened with my team and myself over the last five years from when we came together as one and share what we have learned over the years because I have an incredibly high performing team. So instead of using all the information which is useful and has helped me in the past, I'm giving you some nuggets from my own experience. Um, since 2015, my team has achieved every quarterly incentive um, despite having many seismic shifts um, across the years. We've had to maintain a high performance culture. And a few examples of some of our crises, um, was one of them was um, in 2016, towards the end, we were told that we were being sold um, by our mother company, and it would go to the highest bidder because the company needed money. So everyone looked at each other and was because we we're extremely um, passionate about where we worked as well. 
And during this time, um, it was the unknown. We did not know who was going to buy us and would we lose our jobs? Would they uh, take us in? Um, almost 18 months later, we found out that PNG were acquiring us. All our time in this crisis, we looked at ways on how to keep the team um, performing at the highest level. Um, and I'm really proud to say that uh, during this whole time up until now, we only had approximately six um, people leaving the company out of a team of 45 over this period. And uh, one was actually performance managed out, two emigrated and three retired. So not one of our people left to go to another company despite going through a very um, anxious, anxiety-filled time. But my humble opinion is that high performance culture starts with you as the leader of the business. You have to be very real and stay consistent. The team looks to you and emulates what you are projecting. This is even more true when the road is rocky. You have to stay engaged with the team, continuously collaborate and listen to the co concerns. Take the time to truly understand each team member and what they are saying. And also, show your vulnerability. There are times when I'm really scared or not sure of which way to go. Um, and I will show it and ask for advice as well. Um, be humble, because we're only as strong as our team are. And as a leader, you have to be able to adapt to the situation at the, at the time. I've found that there's no one leadership style that can be applied all the time. Different situations call for different styles. Um, the underlying thread has to be your consistency in the, the way that they would understand you would react. So most importantly, stay calm and confident during this time. We also need to walk our talk as leaders. We need to communicate continuously, make decisions. Sometimes there are very hard choices that have to be made. But be confident and act swiftly. At the start of the pandemic, and we were watching this very closely when first one, well, patient zero, and then we went to three, we suddenly made a decision to pull our team out of the field, primarily because my team does work um, in pharmacies and interact with healthcare professionals. This was two weeks before the government implemented the lockdown. Our belief is that our people come first and their safety was paramount to us as a company. Now that we'd done this though, we needed to understand and focus on what we could do and what we needed to implement to ensure that we could continue keeping the team engaged and still performing at the highest level within the new work from home situation. This part mostly was to allay fears. Um, there's a lot of speculation and we needed to minimize this and clarify what was being said. And then build a new plan around our new reality. The team also needed to trust each other and, us, and trust us as leaders to make the right choices and do the right thing. I don't know if anyone has any questions just on the leadership part for you as a leader. So we didn't have any questions come through yet, Jenny. I'm sure we can move on and um, as they come through, or anyone on the call, if you have questions, you can send them through in the chat and we'll touch on them at the next Q&A stopping. Here we come. So I quite, I love this quote. Great things in business are never done by one person. They're done by a team of people. And yeah, I'll be talking about how we build um, the culture within the team. So most importantly is that you have to keep the business vision priority. But understand that we may have to adapt this in the short term. Um, an example I can give you that we did when we were going through um, the anxiety or anxious period, not quite knowing what would happen, uh, we worked on the sales incentive program, which is based on outcomes. And we need to look at what we measure now. We still need to see, achieve sales numbers, but new measurement criteria, virtual interactions, telephonic calls, 
What support as a business can we do to support our team and look after our customers? So uh, one of the examples we did um, outside of the, um, the COVID situation in our other period was um, we implemented an incentive program over and above the company's normal program where every single team member, and it didn't matter the role or where um, you were in a management level, or what band you were in, everyone could have um, achieved the same um, value, monetary value, um, if we achieved our full business objectives. And this was from our lady who cleaned our um, dishes and made tea right through to um, the Echelons. And uh, what happened is we found everyone was com communicating, people were talking, trying to help each other, making sure no one drops the ball. It caused great excitement. And because we were going for higher goals, despite all the anxiety and anxiousness, um, we could self-fund it. And this pulled right through into the team to build um, that everyone would focus on what we needed to achieve. Um, we also have to um, continuously evaluate results and communicate. Um, so right now with COVID, uh, we, we, ha we haven't slacked on our communication. We're communicating results and communicating the changes and our evaluation of everything. But we're also building our reboot plan. We do um, what, what we will do when we can interact on a face-to-face -face basis again. We've secured PPEs for all the staff, um, inclusive of masks, hand sanitizers, thermometers. We've got do's and don'ts, a full protocol. We've developed a video for when they get back in field so that everyone knows what they can do to continue helping us achieve what we need to achieve, but looking after them first. To get all of this right, we have to have full engagement with the team. Um, in all times, the team has to be fully engaged and we need to understand the individuals, the pressures of home and work, make sure that the team is adequately equipped for the environment that they will now find themselves in and listen to the concerns and address this. This is crucial to also gaining the commitment from the team. I mean, an example I can give of this is um, we um, instituted a work from home allowance to make the to make sure that their home environment was adequately equipped for where we the expectation is that everyone will stay. Um, with this allowance, they could um, purchase either desks, ergonomic chairs, um, displays, uh, bigger monitors, um, so that they could work more effectively. Um, and also taking into account that not everyone has all those things at home. So everything that they would have access to in the office, we have ensured that they have the same tools at home to address all their business needs. Another example is um, we have single parents and the kids are at home with schooling. And we've had to work on ways to allow flexibility that they can still attend to all these other needs while trying to put in um, what they need to do to achieve our business results as well. We also try drive accountability and ownership. It takes many to ensure the high performance culture and it does not only rest on one. It's through collaboration that the strategy can be implemented, each individual has to understand the crucial part that they play in the results being achieved. Um, as I alluded to the acquisition earlier when there was a high state of anxiety and um, uncertainty, um, the short-term plan was changing the incentive that everyone could achieve. This ensured that everyone actually took ownership and accountability for their part that they played in the business. Um, and to ensure that everyone is enabled to do their jobs per, um, properly and to the best of their ability. Um, so everyone has to be very clear of the roles they play and own their part that they bring to the business. 
Um, with this, we also have to be agile and adaptable based on circumstances and also have uh, the ability to redesign strategy from time to time. And we have to make sure that the team is part of this and that this is Um, generally, and I don't know if you can see this picture well, but it's a mom with a head on her arm trying to cook dinner, trying to have a meeting, and doing all everything else at home at the same time. And I know from interaction with my own team, this is generally how my entire fi team feels all the time at the moment. And this is, and this brings me to what most pr is most probably the important aspect, most important aspect of all. And that is the team's well-being. The team can only be productive if there is a balance at work and at home. Um, and we strive to help ensure that that balance is maintained. Um, in 2016 already, we'd introduced work from home um, purely because we had renovations at our offices. And we felt um, this would be more beneficial to the team that they weren't in state of disruption all the time and we actually continued it even though the renovations had um, ended a long time ago uh, right up until now where we are at full work from home. Um, I believe that doing this in 2016 actually prepared us for the environment we are currently facing although the reasons were very different um, for the one we're facing now. Um, so when we originally went for work from home and we implemented a three-day work from home week, um, it was basically because we were communicating with the team and we were listening to their concerns and frustration. And um, what had been brought up in the past was the time wasted um, or spent in traffic with commuting, not having a real place to sit in the office at the time of renovations having to collect children, and also uh, the workplace was far from home. So they would leave very early in the mornings and get home late at night. In order to plan, we ensured that all face-to-face -face meetings were set for a Monday and Thursday in the office when we implemented this. The expectation that was that everyone would be in the office on those days, and the objective was to give the people flex to plan around all their commitments. The Thursday in the office was decided, uh, that was decided on, was to actually acknowledge the time spent in traffic and this, the frustration of arriving home late on a Friday night when the weekend has actually started. We felt that we would rather have everybody in the office on a Thursday and if they got home a bit later, um, at least it was still work the next day. We also introduced coaching and mindfulness training with a focus on mental well, mental well-being, we would have virtual team sessions twice a week, and also have one-to-one -one coaching. During the full lockdown now, with work from home, hours have automatically been booked out of the entire team's diaries, with a cutoff at four o'clock. This was based on feedback received from the team after we <laughs> we had planned a weekly agenda for them whilst in in work from home. And uh, almost immediately after week one, we could feel the vibe was not good. Our team members weren't as engaged and um, weren't as pr productive. We were actually finding they were trying to get off a call or out of a meeting as fast as possible. We immediately set up a safe space where everyone could give feedback um, on what they were feeling and why were they feeling like this. The end result was that they felt that we were actually micromanaging them by putting in this agenda. And despite the agenda, they were still putting in far more hours um, by themselves. So um, they really thought we were trying to keep them busy every hour of the day and not understanding this. Um, on this, uh, because of this feedback, we actually revised the agenda because our agenda had also included capability um, training and we were building on this. Uh, what we decided to do was actually do everything twice a day. So we would have morning sessions 
and this would be mirrored in the afternoon as well, which gave um, our team members the flex to actually be able to interact with the children, maybe do a, a chore or two at home, um, and be able to still build on their capabilities. Um, and also during this, we've continued with mindfulness training. Um, one area that um, I believe we're strong in is build is building capability with COVID and COVID, and after collaborating and making um, decisions on which way to go, um, we decided that this is the perfect time to really, really build the people um, and the capabilities with us moving into a new company. So. Um, We've put everything on an interactive menu on iPhones or on their smartphones. And um, where the app is totally interactive and all the team mem members can partake. Um, the management team also does all the capability training sessions and is always also ranked and rated by the different team members because um, we have leadership boards to really keep them engaged. Um, when we were told about our acquisition um, and before it had happened, we also allowed, uh, invested in all our team members that we um, built all capabilities. They could study um, part-time. We invested in language courses because we believe, and we still believe that um, you're working for us, but should you ever want to leave, you have to be the best possible candidate um, when you apply for a position. So we train our people and build the capability that they can be the best when they are faced with um, other candidates. Um, with our capability building, it is also in a weekly agenda, as I um, alluded to earlier. Uh, we build on um, topics and we mirror everything in the afternoon. But we also get feedback on areas of um, that are essential to the business now, and we are upskilling in all those areas. With the new situation, and even without the situation, we always have to be innovative. So we have to drive disruption to business and to be able to stand up and to um, gain better results. And right now we're challenged with no face-to-face -face interaction. So how do you do this when your team members are sitting at home? We've had to work out new ways of remote contact, understand how our customer wants to be contacted, that was our first port, wants to be contacted and that was our first port of call address the way they would like the interaction without bombarding them because everyone is being bombarded during the situation and find different ways that they would actually engage out of their own. In the beginning, we worked on thank you letters, um, reminding them that we are here if they needed and if there was anything we could do to help them. We addressed some safety um, concerns. So we had smaller practices, doctors, doctor practices and um, independent pharmacies, not part of the big chain groups, where um, funds are limited. There were safety concerns. So we supplied hexi glass, I can call it. It's almost like fiberglass virtual um, windows where we've put on the counters for them. So we reached out to rather help than remind and try and sell because we believed we needed to be doing something more practical. On virtual platforms, we've um, engaged with web-based companies where we do continued education now for our customers. And in some instances, we do reach out telephonically, but we are aware of the pressures and the hardships they are facing. So we are driving that they engage with us through different channels as well. At the same time, we've also had to look at the new consumer habits 
the, their paths to purchase and how does our current or our past strategy, how do we need to adapt this to be able to ensure that we now understand the um, new paths to purchase and has this been taken into account going forward? So um, just the route a, a consumer would walk into a, and I'll use a pharmacy as an example, they would normally go up and down the aisle and look at what, look out for what they want. Where right now, the new insights we've gained, and we work a lot with insights and change, behavioral changes, is that they are going straight to the counter. Um, they believe the counter is king because they want validation of what they are purchasing. So um, it's making sure that we have those areas covered when we go back into field. And through all of this, and might be a bit different during the work from home situation, we have always focused on recognition and reward and celebrating success. So um, we are rewarding individuals in virtual meetings. What we do try and do at the same time is actually have a prize like a cake some food delivered at the same time as when we are uh, making the announcements and recognizing in individuals. We have had appreciation dinners within our team where we reflect and have cheers on our achievements or where individuals can um, recognize others. Um, there are also many other inexpensive ways to recognize and it does not always have to be money which ultimately add a lot more value. Um, for instance, a, a handwritten personal note to each individual, which we have done. Um, it means so much more to the team members because you actually acknowledging them on a very personal level. So, and I'll give you an example actually of what happened to me this morning. Now I'm going to put my camera back on. Um, my, some of my lead team members knew about today and um, I'd spoken to them about some of the things and this morning delivered to my house, I don't know oh, if you can see this, but it was a bottle of champagne and a note saying, oh, we thought you might need a backup plan, lots of love. And that was from six members within my team. And I actually really appreciated it. It was, uh, I, I didn't realize how important these um, things are. And it really was wonderful to get something like that. So, for me, the real competitive advantage in any business is one word only, and it's the people. So just looking at what my team and I feel are, are uh, that form the basis of our strategy for the high performance culture is the engagement, people first, the vision, focus on your results, accountability and ownership, build that, keep the balance and the well-being right, build capabilities, innovate, reward and recognize, and celebrate success. Do you have any questions? Great, Jenny. So we actually have quite a few questions. Um, I think it makes up for the fact that there weren't any in the first round of stopping for questions. Um, so I'll get to them. The first one is, it's really tough to stay strong when you, the leader, don't know what's coming next. Are you honest with your team on that? I am. I'm very honest with my team. Um, because, and I think that's where, um, where I was talking about be vulnerable. Um, I know it comes, you, you have to walk your talk and be calm and confident, but it's okay to show that you are also scared um, and you reach out to them for help. I'm very aware of that and I do say my team knows. <laughs> Great. And the next one is how do you keep track of who is still performing at a high level, especially when they also have to do homeschooling, uh, tend to other stuff, and have you not found that standards have gone down? 
So we've also had to adapt what we measure. So um, for instance, and I'll just use the sales team, is it was eight calls a day that they had to have, they would um, put in their strike rate, they would, we would measure the actual versus planned. Um, and also we measure sales out data. So we'd also look at demand. We've had to adapt that and work within the situation that we're facing uh, um, right now. So we do still have KPIs or, or measurable outcomes, but they are different. Ultimately, it is still the end result, um, but we have to have trust and we'll give the guidelines, but we cannot micromanage to the degree that um, we have to be aware of the situations we are in. So one example is um, we have weekly connects, one-on-ones. Um, I do weekly connects with two of my team members at five o'clock in the morning because they do it before the children get up. So we've adapted working hours. Um, and I've actually found that people have been more productive to the degree that where we've actually mapped out some working hours for others where we say not after four o'clock or not after five o'clock, depending on where you are, because people are actually working harder in my mind because they are also worried about results. But we're not measuring the same KPIs. We're looking at our financial results as our outcomes. Great, and I think this next question actually ties into the previous one, well, it's the opposite of the previous one and ties into your last point you made. Um, how do you guide your team to have a better work-life balance so that they aren't working 100% of the time or overworking themselves? Yeah, the, that was a huge issue in the beginning. And um, I still, to this day, will send people emails, personal ones, when I see emails have popped in at all hours of the night. And I know I've been on calls with them all day. We, um, and there, I've, I'll adapt the leadership style slightly to be more authoritarian in that way. I will say we book in our time in your diary because this cannot continue and you cannot sustain what you need to do at this pace. So we actually then will take time out and say nothing is going to go happen after this time. And sometimes some people don't always listen, but 90% of them are extremely thankful when someone else has made the decision. And we're also forcing shutdown you have to log off at night, where we find if the computer runs in the background and you're still at home while you walk past it all the time, you just quickly check and then you sit down and you start working again. So we also have shutdown of your computer, log off at night. Great, I think it's um, a very strange um, conception that people would have that if you're working from home, you'd actually work less, when in reality it's the other way around, that Everyone's working a lot more. Um, well, I, I'll tell you, my son said to me this morning, I never want a job like yours ever. All you do is work. And I said to him, no, but normally when we're at the office, he said, but when you're we're at the office, you got home at a decent time. I said, I know, it's, it's just the situation. It isn't normal. So we're all working hard. Yeah. Um, the next one is, um, the question is from someone that has a clothing manufacturing company. What would you suggest? Sorry, I think some women off mute. Uh, what would you suggest would be the best way to build a high-performing team and help the team find balance during the COVID time? So, and I'm get. Could I ask some questions? Yeah, is are you? It's your own company and. Are they all, do you outsource your your people or are they all working for you? They are all working for us. And what is the engagement level like? So uh, what my business uh, partner does, because I'm, I'm, I'm working from home, is she's always having a meeting every morning just to sort of give them updates in terms of where we are, in terms of sanitizing. 
But I think the pressure comes from the fact that in spite of what's going on, we still need production, we still need to get things done. And the challenge now is people are sort of like working slower and there's some sense of not being motivated, so to speak. And so have you, and, and this is how I would approach it, and please don't think mine would be the right way. I'm just um, going to pull from experience I've had. Could you give them a target to achieve every day and then reward achieving the target so on productivity to start building that? Um, so what we do is we do give them targets every day. I guess the, the rewarding part of it has been very challenging <laughs> because, um, or, or, yeah. Or possibly those that are exceeding the targets, ask them to share with the team you know, recognize those ones, or one a day or one a week, and ask them to share with the team how they are achieving the targets. Um, because we also learn from sharing. So, and once you start recognizing individuals, you'll find that the rest of the team also wants to be recognized and get up there. Gotcha. I'll, I'll, I'll think I'll definitely uh, implement that. And and also what they've had to cope with and how they've got around it, because we really learn from each other at the end of the day. Sure, definitely. Great. The next one is for a lot of teams, this is the first time they're having to work from home. Um, did you? Did you find your first time with the team was easy? What what learnings did you have that you could take forward into this COVID time? What did you do then that you're not repeating now? Okay, so uh, as I said, we were fortunate. I already impl implemented work from home in 2016, but I had a problem with it at times. Um, I wasn't sure because. I wasn't sure if everyone was actually working and, and that sounds terrible when I say it. I had to change my mindset and I had to trust and I had to focus on outcomes, not on what are you doing during the day. So this has been achieved and that is amazing. Um, and only once I, so I really, uh, I'm an older person <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, 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 good, great for younger people because I think they grew up in a totally different environment. I really had to learn to trust and believe and just look at the outcomes and and celebrate those. So it was a struggle for me in the beginning. Um, now we've got so used to it that um, we would we would have continued implementing it had it not been for COVID. Um, and COVID has just kind of like solidified it for me. I still used to go into office in the times where we, we introduced work from home the first time round. And um, so now I just see how much you do and how busy you are. It's actually horrifyingly scary. True. Uh, I think we can touch on one more before we can move on um, and that is any advice on how to maintain the same morale when your business is reducing salaries due to the economy um, we're trying to maintain high morale but the reality doesn't allow it i know that is um very difficult one but and I take it even from my own team. We, um, in the beginning where I said, you know, we had to get the speculation out of the way. The fact that you still have a job um, is absolutely awesome. I know some people have taken a knock in salaries, but you then I would ask them, get innovation and creation, creative ideas from the team on how can we build our reboot plan to make sure that we even get bigger, higher, faster, um, you know, increase our sales or our business so that we can make up for what we lost? Um, 
And it, 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 I'll give you a personal instance now. Is um, my husband lost his job during the situation? Uh, financially, it's been a struggle, but I'm so grateful that I still have my job. So I'm really pleased and, and understanding now that um, income has been halved, um, and that I I can still do what I need to do to. Um, to make sure that our business stays viable, that I'm doing everything I can, that we will fly, we will make it happen. Um, but I've also had to look at his um, state of mind, which has been hard. Um, so for instance, we might have had a lot of takeouts previously ordering is, he makes those meals now and it's saving us so much money. It's trying to find different ways of making them, people feel better about themselves and that they are still contributing, even though it may not appear like that. I, I don't know if that answered your question, but I, I can understand that. But I would ask for help to build bigger, faster, get this moving the minute we're out um, to try and get to make up for what we lost. Great. Thanks, um, Jenny. Uh, we can move on and touch on the remaining questions at the end. Okay, I don't have many more slides. So what I'm trying to say is that, yes, we have calm days and then we have the storm, whether the outlook is calm or whether it's stormy. Um, there are certain principles that I, I believe that has worked for me in the past that we have to continuously uh, uh, apply because the team has to maintain whatever situation we're finding ourselves in, the same high performance culture, otherwise it will really go flat. But from my side, and I'll show you some things we've done, yeah, two examples of what we've done to try and maintain engagement. Fun um, is the one was, and I'll play a little bit of the video, is we needed to get everyone out of their PJs and give them a chance to dress up and feel normal. Um, but everyone had such fun doing it and almost every single team member interacted and we had to interact with everyone to get sequences right. Um, if you will indulge me and I'll play a little piece for you. I hope it. really amazing Jenny I think you're gonna have to probably talk a little bit about what we're seeing so the people listening in the recording can I understand didn't they hear the music quiet <laughs> sorry I thought the music was playing okay so so we have youngsters in the team and the beginning started mainly with the management team um and we all did each other to do TikTok um which I'd never heard of in my life before, but anyhow, <laughs> and we got everyone to dress up and do different things, and but by handing something over, so we would move to different um, themes. But it it really got the whole team engaged. Then we also have coffee, just a coffee connect with different team members, um, and not work at all. Um, further on in this TikTok video, you'll see the kids are involved, everyone's involved. So we've really tried to 
continue to have fun over this time. Oopsie, there we go. So, from us to you, so a lot of my team members, we just want to, I just want to thank you for your time and hope you can take from this to help build your high performance strategy. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Jenny. Um, there's a few more questions we can touch on now. Um, one of them is, how do you enforce the importance of physical and mental health? As this is the biggest challenge at this, at this time. People sit for long hours and are stressed and anxious. What activities or habits do you recommend? Okay, so what we do as well as a team is we try and do a workout <laughs> early mornings. Not everyone always joins, but we do get people showing, um, sending in their videos. As I said, we block out times in the diary. Lunchtime is blocked out. We also have a rule to try and end meetings 15 minutes earlier so that you've got time to stretch um, and go do what you have to do. Um, so we are trying to enforce it. Obviously, it's up to the individual, but by us making that time available, um, we're trying to do to help them do something. Great. And the next one is some people confuse outcomes with targets and deliverables. Um, how do you help clarify the, dif the difference? <laughs> yeah, so um, for me, outcomes is um, what has been achieved. Targets and deliverables, we in this team, uh, we try and exceed all targets, and those are our, um, part of our outcomes. Targets and deliverables are a guide to get to the actual outcome we want. I don't know if that helps. Great, I'm sure that helps. Um, so that was the last of, oh, there are actually more questions, sorry. Um, are these examples being carried out across PNG globally? Uh, example, ending meetings 15 minutes early, blocking out lunch. Um, we find the biggest stresses are external to our is external to our team. Yes, it is being carried out globally. Well, within my region, um, the AMA region, which reports into Singapore, they also have blocked out times that, um, and also we have a huge time difference. So their blocked out time might interfere with my time that I would have liked to have interacted, but we work around that. And within South Africa, it's carried out within the whole team, the whole country. Great, and earlier you had mentioned a PNG training app, or a training app, and the question is, is it a, a PNG-developed app? And uh, can you share more on what kind of development there is? besides languages. Okay, so the training app is a PNG developed app, which was done within the division. Um, this training focuses on, and I'm just gonna quickly open it because I do it with the team, so I can tell you. So we look at different areas. The one is um, selling um, virtually. So, um, how do you open, how do you close, how do you probe on a virtual call or mainly on a telephonic call? Um, I'm going to, we've got you know, persuasive selling formats, selling via phone, objection handling, a detailing. So we don't always just sell, we don't sell products, we would actually educate and train. How do you detail via the phone? So we've had it developed on a region, regional level for us. We were the first country to roll it out uh, yeah, in South Africa. And um, learnings were taken from, yeah. When I speak in languages and that, we actually invest outside. So we use other learning institutions where we allow people to do training there as well. And there's another one on what do you do to assist the team members who are going through psychological stresses due to the effects of COVID-19? So, yes, um, and we have had 
a few people who are going through psychological stress. Um, as a team, a leadership team, we will connect with them individually. Um, we also have a sister um, for P and G, and we have a um, we have a care line. Um, I'm just trying to think of the name now, which we also reach out to, where they can also phone and get absolute counselling um, at the cost of a PNG. So uh, there are numerous ways. Um, most imp a, a lot of our sales reps are people's people. That's their job. They love people and they get very frustrated being at home. We, we have been able to, if someone lives close to another representative, and when, especially when the lockdown lifted slightly to level three, we have tried to also have some face-to-face -face connects at um, the person's home just to make sure. But we check in and we have all the tools to help them um, get through this. Or Okay, and another one came through on the earlier point you made with regards to uh, PNG setting aside a budget so that people could, could get chairs, laptops, etc. Um, to replicate that office environment. Um, what kind of feedback did you get from your team regarding that? They were they were totally surprised um, and appreciative. Um, things like printers, we then allowed because a lot of people do already have a, a office type set up because we had the work from home principle previously. Um, but we also allowed um, cartridge, printer cartridge ink, um, you know, things that are expensive and now you're printing more, etc. So it wasn't just the desk or the chair or the monitor. Um, it was what, if I was in the office and I could quickly go and print, at least I have a printer or a scanner and I have enough ink for that, um, which is costly. This one's a bit broader, but I think it's um, more PNG related, or you can speak on it from a more PNG related standpoint on, um, do you think that the work from home and three day week and things will become a norm across PNG now, or do you see um, PNG going back to the normal five day a week in the office uh, setup anytime soon? Um, within PNG, and I can only talk on what I know, Flex is being um, pushed. I don't think we'll ever go back to a normal five-day week. Um, but obviously, it's also individual-based. Um, there are people who like being in the office and want to be in the office um, because they're at a different phase in their life. They don't have the same commitments or they live close to the office. Um, so PNG definitely has a, a policy of flexi time. So it's um, making sure that it's rolled out. Yes, it will be implemented. Great, and this is actually a follow-up from the previous um, question on um, morale and uh, keeping morale high during, even though salaries are being cut and things. Uh, it's we had salespeople on commission, so it's really difficult. Um, really difficult due to the loss of income. The ideas of team building are really great. Do you have any more? Um, I do have more and I can actually give more examples as well. So what I can do is I can add it to this uh, presentation and possibly it can be sent out. Great, I think that's a great idea because this presentation will be shared with everyone on the call after. Um, Next question is, my company has massively been affected by the COVID-19. Uh, since we are a travel agency in Ghana, the company could support staff with 50% of their salaries, even though we had no business at all. Do you think it's advisable to lay off some of the staff since we can't continue with salary payments? That may be more company specific. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, what I, I will tell you is, um, I think we also have to be realistic about the situation we're in, and that's sometimes the hard part, um, being in the position you're in, is you can pay 
everyone 50% of the salary and run out of money within three months because there is no way you're going to bring in an income or you're going to have to make some tough decisions and be able to sustain, I don't know how many you would lay off, but some of the staff to keep the company going that when it does reopen, that you can actually build it up again and be able to employ people again. Um, and those are sometimes the hard decisions that have to be made where you have to face reality and then make the decision on what you believe is going to be the outcome if you don't or if you do. Great. Uh, one more before we can hand back to Jean to close out. Um, how do you personally find balance considering you have to keep it together for everyone else as well? And if you can share some tips on that. So said I read. That's <laughs> my no. Um, how I personally find balance at the moment is um, I'm very fortunate my whole family is with me. So my husband and my kids. So I do sh try and shut down at a certain time. And I will interact and I make it a point not to talk work. And I don't carry my cell phone with me then. So that I'm totally disengaged from the work side and I'm fully engaged with the family. Um, sometimes after everyone's gone to bed or people are watching TV and we're not absolutely engaging as we were early, earlier, then I might log on again and just check, um, especially if I've committed to certain things. So I do try and keep the promises on that side. Um, but my downtime is with my family and um, I, I feel like I've almost been blessed in a way, even though I've been putting in long hours, I've had the most amazing time with the family where there are no distractions. And we do it every night. Great. Jenny, thanks for taking the time to go through this presentation on leadership. And thank you to everyone joining on the call. Uh, thanks for all the questions that, you, that came through. There were quite a lot of questions, uh, quite good interaction. And Jean, I will hand back to you to close up. Thank you, Mikhail. Thank you, Jenny. Jenny, that was awesome. There was a time there when I thought you were going to give us 15 minutes back. So the questions didn't allow that. So that's really great engagement from, from the team and everybody who joined. Um, I loved your team example. So thank you so much for sharing those. Uh, especially the Coffee Connect, but no work. Um, the team exercising together. Um, I think that, the, and the TikTok slides were really great. I think everybody must take a look at those. That was, that was great fun. So thanks everybody who joined. We appreciate your time as always. Uh, as Mikhail said, the video and the slides will be shared. And Jenny has offered to add a few more examples onto her slides. So we'll make sure we'll share them after she's added the examples. As always, we have a feedback form that we'd really appreciate you please filling in, especially telling us what other kind of webinars you'd like us to hold for the rest of this year. Um, as Jenny said, this might become a lot more of our new normal than we may want it to be our new normal. But thank you so much. Um, as always, those of you who are not registered with WeConnect, please go to our website, weconnectinternational.org, and put in your details. As a woman-owned business, we have webinars, we have other online training, we have Connect sessions, we have amazing Meet the Member sessions, of which PNG is one of the, the members. So please join us. We really want to help you to uh, rethink, reshape, and, and grow your businesses and to connect with other women-owned businesses too. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jenny, for your time. We appreciate it. Enjoy the bottle of champagne. How nice of your team to do that. That was really great. And thanks, everybody, for joining. The feedback forms will follow soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you from my side. Thank you, Jenny. Awesome. Awesome. We'll have you back for another webinar another time. Great. Yeah. Get on time.